The recent case of Wellmory is a potentially important development in the law on place of establishment and belonging. This lecture reviews the law as it stands and how the decision takes us forward. The place where the business of a taxable person is established is where the functions of the business's central administration are carried out. In order to determine where that is, account shall be taken of the place where essential decisions concerning the general management of the business are taken, the place where the registered office of the business is located, and the place where management meets. Businesses, of course, could move the management meetings around to make it hard to determine where this is, and the registered office could be located in a tax haven, so tax authorities may have to do some digging to be sure where the establishment is. The mere presence of a postal address is not enough to fix the place of establishment of a business. It would be too easy to require a brass plate somewhere. There has to be a stronger link to the place. The importance of determining the place of establishment is that the place of supply of services normally depends on it. In general, unless a special rule applies, business-to-business -business supplies are taxed where they're received, that is, where the customer is established. However, that can change where the customer has another fixed establishment, which receives the supply for its own purposes, rather than for the purposes of the main establishment. Similarly, the general rule is that business-to-consumer supplies are made where the supplier is established, unless a special rule applies to shift the place of supply somewhere else for specific types of supply, or, once again, unless the supplier has another fixed establishment that actually makes the supply to the consumer, in which case it will be taxable where the fixed establishment is. The basic terms established and another fixed establishment were in the sixth directive, but the law has developed in the Court of Justice over the years. The Planzer Luxembourg case in 2008 included a decision on where the business is established. It sets out the rule as described on the previous slide, which was then incorporated into the implementing regulation in 2011. Note that the definition depends on the place where the central administration is carried out, for which the place management decisions are taken is one determining factor. That is similar to, but not identical to, the concept of central management and control, which is relevant in determining where a company is resident for corporate taxes on profits in many jurisdictions. The concept of another fixed establishment was considered first in detail in the Burkholz case in 1985, and in a number of other cases from then on, until it too was incorporated in the implementing regulation in 2011. The Burkholz case suggested that using another fixed establishment to determine the place of supply, rather than the main establishment, was an exception to the general rule. The establishment is the basic place of belonging. However, the place of supply would be shifted to another fixed establishment where that was necessary to produce a rational result, which includes making sure that consumption in the EU gets taxed somewhere, rather than nowhere, or to resolve disputes between member states as to which of them enjoyed taxing rights. Taxing the same transaction in both member states couldn't be a rational result. So the idea of another fixed establishment is related to the question of where a business is in reality making or receiving its supplies of services, where it would be most rational to tax them. The implementing regulation, based on the Burkholz decision, says that a fixed establishment shall be any establishment, other than the main place of establishment already referred to, characterised by a sufficient degree of permanence and a suitable structure in terms of human and technical resources to enable it to receive and to use the services supplied to it for its own needs. The important point in Burkholz was that the company had technical resources on board ships in the North Sea, but it didn't have human resources. It only had an establishment in Germany, not a separate fixed establishment on the ships. The Planzer case also introduced another point that was incorporated in the implementing regulation, the fact of having a VAT identification number shall not in itself be sufficient to consider that a taxable person has a fixed establishment. You can have a VAT registration in a place without having the necessary human and technical resources there. Note that the concept of another fixed establishment is similar to the concept of a permanent establishment or branch that may make a foreign company liable to direct taxes on profits in a country in which it's not resident. But as with establishment and residence, the rules are not identical. If you're established in a place for VAT, you may well be resident there for direct taxes. If you have a permanent establishment, it's likely to be a fixed establishment. And if you have a fixed establishment, it's likely to be a permanent establishment. But it's not certain.
The Will Morry case is potentially a significant judgment about the meaning of another fixed establishment. However, it is not entirely clear how it will be applied because it's for the national court to determine various factors, as usual. The business model is a little unusual. There's a Cypriot company, referred to as B, which operates a website. That seems to be mainly used by Polish customers. I'm not sure if they're all consumers or might include some Polish businesses, but the language of the website is Polish, so we can assume that most of them are Polish. The website mainly or exclusively offers for sale products of one Polish company, W, which is part of a corporate group with B. So far, it seems a fairly standard arrangement. However, it then gets a bit peculiar. Apparently, you don't simply go onto the website and buy stuff. It's an auction site. Again, apparently not like eBay, because you're buying presumably new goods from a single commercial seller. I would look up the site and see how it all works, but as it's going to be in Polish, I don't think that would take me very far. Anyway, the Polish customers had to buy the right to bid, so there were payments from Polish consumers to a Cypriot company for some sort of a service. On my diagram, I'm putting that in Euro because Cyprus uses the Euro. Is that service within the place of supply and mini one-stop shop rules? I'm not even sure. Of course, this case deals with the pre-2015 situation. If the consumer's bid is the highest, the consumer gets to buy the goods. That at least appears to be simple, as there would be a payment in Poland, presumably in Zlotys, for a supply of goods that happens entirely in Poland. To add to the fun, B then pays W a commission on the bid sales. So B's profit comes from the difference between what keen bidders pay to it and what it pays over to W, and W's income comes from selling goods and from the commission from B on all the bids. The question was about place of supply. B is making supplies of bids to the customers and is receiving a supply of some sort from W in exchange for the commission. If it's purely established in Cyprus, before 2015, both those supplies would be made in Cyprus. Cypriot VAT would be accounted for on the bid income and B would reverse charge the purchase of whatever service the commission represents. However, if B is treated as having a fixed establishment in Poland and that fixed establishment is counted as being the one more concerned with the making and receiving of the supplies, then it would have to register in Poland and account for Polish output tax on the bid income, and W would charge it Polish VAT on the commissions, which it could recover, of course, because it would be a fully taxable Polish registered business. But Polish VAT at 23% is higher than Cypriot VAT at 19%. The Court of Justice rehearsed the principles, as it usually does, and reviewed the precedent cases on another fixed establishment. These are all pretty old. Burkholz from the 1980s, ARO Lease and Farball Gelting Linian from the 1990s, none of them dealing with internet supplies, or even with a world in which the internet was very important. Nevertheless, the Court said that they still applied, and indeed had been codified in the implementing regulation in 2011. The starting point is that a business is established in one place, and that is assumed to be the place it belongs, unless it has another fixed establishment elsewhere. The rules for determining that are those I covered on slide two. The Advocate General's opinion wasn't made available in English, but it seemed to say that B used W's human and technical resources in Poland to run the website. It wasn't necessary for the main establishment of B to own the resources of another fixed establishment, as long as there is a structure of some sort that possesses a sufficient degree of permanence which can be used in the same way as if they were owned, that structure will constitute a fixed establishment. So, according to the Advocate General, B had a fixed establishment in Poland, and the consequences would follow. The full court noted, in its written observations and at the hearing, the Polish company argued that the infrastructure it makes available to the Cypriot company doesn't enable the Cypriot company to receive and use for its business the services applied to it by the Polish company. According to the Polish company, the human and technical resources for the business carried on by the Cypriot company, such as computer servers, software, servicing, and the system for concluding contracts with consumers and receiving income from them, are situated outside Polish territory. It claims that those factual circumstances weren't verified in the main proceedings. That is very interesting. It seems to confirm that where you put your computer servers makes a difference for VAT, even though, as far as I can tell, it makes little practical difference to running your website. It's perhaps just as well that they've just brought in the new place of supply and mini one-stop shop rules for digital services, in just as we have discovered this fact, or businesses would be moving all their servers to tax havens, if they haven't already done so. 
the Court of Justice said that it is for the National Court to determine such facts, and they said that if the Polish company's assertions were found to be factually correct, the Cypriot company would not have a fixed establishment in Poland. The Court of Justice ruled that the link between the economic activities of the two companies is not relevant. It's necessary to draw a distinction between the services supplied by the Cypriot company to the Polish consumers and the supplies by the Polish company to the Cypriot company. They are distinct supplies of services which are subject to different schemes of VAT. So that's what internet businesses will have to think about in deciding where they belong in future.